It must be cold. It's at least jacket weather up here in the dark. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, virtually chilly. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to VR Verdict Podcast, episode one twenty six, our weekly podcast where we talk about everything VR. I am PJ, I'm Wookie, and I'm Mark, known as Mark from Markets VR and Dates VR. How's it going, sir? Yeah, very well. Well, it's the afternoon here in the UK. I'm pretty sure it's very early for you guys in the States. <laughs> Not very. Yeah, but like we're early birds. Yeah. Oh, well, you told me it was 7 a.m., Wookie. So to me, that's early. Oh, he changed. Yeah, 7, 7, 7 a.m. He's 8. <laughs> oh, so you got it all right then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're here to chat about your awesome space markets VR and what all that entails. So um, you want to start with a little bit of your backstory and we'll go from there. Yeah, um, awesome. So so this is one of a few projects I've undertaken. So I think what I'm probably most name, known for is Dates VR, which I set up about a year and a half ago. Um, and that's got some press coverage, which is brilliant. It's getting momentum. It's probably one of our most successful VR-based platforms. But in the time of using, and I won't go into too much detail about that because obviously today's about markets VR, but I'm definitely <laughs> you know, more than happy to come back and talk more about dates VR. Sure. And I created markets VR after realizing that I would go up to avatars and you know, be completely clueless as to who they were, where they were, what they did, and just kind of have, you know, general chit chat conversations. And as time progressed, I kind of discovered a bit more about what it is they do, where they come from, what their background is, and be super interested. And it's like no one would know this about you had they not asked it about you. And it's like not even necessarily from a product perspective, you know just things that they are good at and what people would be interested in them for so we created markets vr so essentially kind of what like a flea market that's what you guys would refer to it as in the states i think but what we yep. would just call a market in the uk um which is way more attractive give... than flea market <laughs> yeah, as a kid <laughs> yeah. growing up i literally was like why would i go flea market to a flea and, you know, market like, yeah to get <laughs> later night and be like <laughs> We need yeah. a collar for the flea. It's so <laughs> I thought it was collar. the pet. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> what we wanted to do was create like basically a one-stop hub for people that have goods or services that they can provide locally. I mean globally, sorry, and um have a banner that's behind them that best portrays what it is they do and be here at a set time within a day, once a week or twice a week or whatever they feel like. And their avatar can stand in front of that. And then anyone that pops in can see the things that they do and instigate a conversation about it and have a conversation with that avatar about what it is they do. So it's just a great way for people to kind of understand, you know, what it is that they do. Yeah. So that's how kind of markets VR came about to help people yes. best, you know, portray what it is they do. Yeah. Who modeled a cute little uh, thing? Because I like the little roof everything who made, Sorry, what's that? Space? who made like the the stalls in 3d and... yeah so i did and um it was not my it was not my background i didn't understand anything about putting assets together and creating worlds <laughs> and during the lockdown and having a lot of free time because uh unfortunately i got let go from my job because they you know the, the company went under and i i used to work as a personal trainer um, in london like a, a boutique gym unfortunately yeah they, they couldn't keep hold of me so during the lockdown i was staying at home a lot and i was just kind of like this vr stuff is amazing i'm just going to discover it so a lot of trial and error and a lot of error i figured out how to finally <laughs> get where i am now <laughs> um nice. but in terms of like the actual images within the stools then it's not that complex it's just a 16 by 9 mm -hmm. image banners at the top if you've got a double stool like this one that you can see here it's two sets of 16 by 4.5 
No, so it's just two images, and the back images mm -hmm. here are 16 by 9, 16 by 9. Um, and then the world is obviously the complex bit. But the thing that we wanted to ultimately do was didn't want to make it too complicated for the people that wanted to have a stall in here to understand everything VR, to understand how to make assets. We just wanted people to best portray what it is they do with a 16 by 9 image and then the rest of the kind of vr like aspect of it can be down to me and the team yeah but yeah it was me a long way to answer your question but yeah it was me that built it <laughs> nice <laughs> got there eventually <laughs> it worked you want to um you have kind of a little trailer do you want to go through that quick and then um move move to booth you created for us in here yeah 100 percent. Really so do. i've got a screen up there if you want to just in your avatar head i'll press play so this is kind of what best sells the idea to anyone who doesn't really understand what it is we're doing so i'll press play it's one minute long and i will commentate on it for the people for your followers that are just listeners right now this is a message to e-commerce businesses who sell products and services globally who wish to add a fun, simple and alternative way to meet new customers and generate more business. Pixel Market by Markets VR is now open, a virtual reality marketplace that allows customers to shop in virtual Sometimes it's no. paused. I don't know if it's done it for you guys. Has it done that then? Yep. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> it's yeah, sorry, it's just from all around the, world. the nature of the internet. Can visit your oh. You can be working from... Sorry, just give it a moment. It's um, bandwidth sometimes could be the issue. Is it just a green screen for you guys right now? No, it, it was it picked back up. Picture. Okay. Okay, I'll press play yes, again. Sorry. Customers just to let me know the virtual cuts. reality and receive their products. Oh, yeah, people can use it in a 2D version like this. Hello, Swipe and, and be straight at their store to talk like to customers. You can visit your virtual store, discuss your products, and oh, their goods, real products, orders. and services. And then obviously they can close the deal after talking to the customer. <laughs> nice to meet you. And you. Take care. You can also leave your stall unattended 24 hours a day and customers can still place orders with your business. All that is required is a 16 by 9 widescreen image. Our stalls are filling up fast. If you want more information and to secure a stall, then direct message Markets VR and start generating new business at Pixel Market. Win at work by communicating okay, let's effectively choose that. with Grammarly. Oh. Meet Todd. How do I get this? He is emailing a difficult <laughs> client. Hi. Sorry Thanks. about this. And <laughs> yeah, I hopefully you don't get you, get you guys in trouble for that. <laughs> yeah, oh, so, I'll get us some revenue. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. So um, for me, sometimes oh, like you know, depending on location, bandwidth, and whatnot. On that screen, it went green for me, so I didn't know if it was playing for you guys, but it turns out it was, and I had to pause it. But in the video, so I think the key takeaway from that is that people that own a stool don't have to have a VR headset. They can just operate on a 2D model, so they can still work from their home, be stood idle at their you know, um, stool, and just wait for someone to come up and talk to them. And when they do, they just tether the tab and then can instantly engage and talk to that customer about their goods and services. And actually, we strongly encourage only st uh, the stall owners to not attend their stall in VR headset, because there will be moments when it's quiet in here, and there'll be moments <laughs> when it's busy. And when it's quiet, you're going to get pretty bored in this immersive experience in a VR headset, and no one's coming up. You know, So that's why you kind of just stay there right shoot in 2D. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to shoot yeah. at in VR. You're like, I need a gun, a bow and arrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so they can sit yeah. there and just like, is there like a ping noise, or they just hear somebody talking? Like if they're working on your PC and you just, you know, like the head of the tab. I think we, I'm used to saying Alt Tab. You just switch over. You just would hear it. You get some sort of. Yeah, so um, you didn't hear it in the advert, and obviously this world at the moment, we're not open yet. We're still in the kind of getting the stalls recruitment phase. But when someone enters the world, it will say their name. It will go, so-and-so has entered the world. So then they will hear a notification that someone's entered the world. Therefore, they know that there's a potential customer that might come up and talk to them. Um, so there is that. But then also, if someone then 
you know, if they're just mulling around the stalls and they've not come up to you for a little while, you don't have to stay there looking at them. You can carry on and working. When they approach your stall, they would say hello to you. Hi, like this. And you could just swipe and instantly talk to them and, yeah, refer to anything that's on your backing images. Yeah. I think that's Thanks. fantastic because I just got the picture every time I, PJ and I, you know, PJ just is with a camera and we're recording and stuff, it's where you put your headset down. If you were in VR, like, waiting for somebody and somebody's walking up or talking to your stall like hello but your yeah. hands are dangling and your head's down and then you just <laughs> go to like pop up like a robot that would freak me out as like, yeah I'm here, i mean like, it, it is a bit disturbing so when you're in here in 2d the avatar will look like your cameraman over there where his arms are just mm -hmm. down to his side and he's kind of regimented but i think a lot of people <laughs> understand that people attend in 2d and 3d you know the 3d people like ourselves that are moving were obviously in vr the ones that are stood like that are obviously in 2d but that's why it's great we don't want so you know a lot of people work at home like kind of eight or nine hours a day you could be stood at your stool the whole day yeah and you could have three or four people just come up and talk to you about what it is you do you know like say if, so shall we go to your store and so your viewers and yeah, listeners can out. understand so I did build a VR Verdict, a stall, which is available as a service through MarketSCAR. People that are not very, you know, confident at building their own stall, um, you know, for a small fee, we can analyze your brand, extrapolate like information about you and create something for you, for you to review. And obviously there's a back and forth process. You can see the first iteration. And then you you can critique it and we can apply more changes to it, send it back until you've got a product that best represents your brand. So yeah, do you want to go over and should we look at the store that we did for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Do it. So this way. So this is your own stall. <laughs> Just readjusting our fancy camera, man. Yeah. Should I just go ahead and talk, even though he chases? Yeah. So, so what I did here is well, basically Dan and I, so the other guy that's working on this project with me, a market to our project, we looked at your brand and we analyzed the things you do. So you guys sell merch, you know, relative to your podcast, which is awesome. So rather than putting every single item that you sell, you know, it can be, it will clutter the image. You don't want to overwhelm mm -hmm. anyone that visits your stall. You want them to come and visit here, instantly look at it, realize what it is you do within 10 to 15 seconds, even less than that if possible. Yeah. So like we do allow people to submit their own artwork that, you know, they, they have the control of doing that. But if we get something that's too cluttered and too confused, we won't approve it and it won't come in. You know, like we're not harsh about it, we'll constructively critique it, but people that submit their own have to be open to criticism, you know, constructive criticism. So, what we've done here is we've taken, like, you know, say two or three of your items from your Redbubble store, which I believe is one of them that you sell merch on for your show. Yep. And we've just taken a few items and then we've put a statement next to it, like, um, listen to our latest episode, kick up your feet, have a coffee with our VR verdict cup. Straight away, people can imagine what it is, how they could, you know, why a cup would be cool to have. And like while listening to your show, they could be having a coffee, listen to your show. And um, then we've done like a hat here, like show your listeners um, who you're listening to. Then we've got a clock here. Never miss a show with our VR verdict clock. So it's just kind of like real clever <laughs> ways to yeah. affirm why someone would want to own such a product. And then down here, rather than, like I said, showing every item I put from bags, bath mats to hats, our full range of merch via the link on our social media social media links there you know so it's incredibly simple people look they see that you sell merch they see that there's more to this range here's just a few great items and they feel compelled to understand more about it but then because you guys um cover a multitude of things in vr you know you talk about people's projects and you know the games and the apps that are operating here so what we've done is obviously you guys want to be propositioned with people that might want to be on your show. You know, you want to mm -hmm. kind of discuss with people. So we've done a call to action. So anyone here can see, like, subscribe to um, the podcast and hear the stories behind your favorite VR games and apps. And then here, a link to your Podbean station, and then people can know exactly what to search, where to find you guys. But then awesome. also, because you 
have a stall in here. People want to know when you're going to be here to come up and talk to you, like how I'm talking to you now. So what we have here is, do you have an interesting business story or project within VR? If you want to chat to the host about appearing on the show, then you can find them here every Saturday. And then I've put time zones based around. So, you know, you know these times are incorrect, guys, which we had previously spoken about, which will be updated because we're still in that negotiation phase. You know, for people that are in PST within the US, know that you're here between 7 and 8 a.m. People that are in CST between 9 and 10, PST between 10 and 11, GMT between 3 and 4 p.m. So it's good. So people at a moment's notice can come in and be like, oh, okay, they're going to be here between that time. I'll make a calendar yeah. entry. Yeah. I'll quickly jump in and, and chat with you guys about it. We kind Sorry, of talked on. about this before the or this here. The biggest enemy, if you will, of VR and metaverse and all that are time zones. So that is super on just on the fly. You know, you know it's just easy to know when we're here. And at each clock yeah, seller for each boom. <laughs> Even, yeah, even if you have like listed the time zones, people might not read the whole block. I load the little visual with the little clock, device, you know, like boom. I think just yeah, it's so useful. I really like that. Sorry to and, yeah, in. oh, that's fine. But I also want to point out, you know, during the whole process, you you came up with this whole thing without any of our input, and it's really yeah. neat because you wrote all these little clever things. Like we didn't say that. So yeah. I think that's just amazing. You take a first crack at it and say, hey, what do you think? The only thing we changed was the subscribe to the podcast line. Other than that, yeah, that's all you. And I think um, you should lead a little more like, you know, with your background in marketing, just so people know, like, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. The reason we would have had to change that is because that's already established in TJ and I think like, the VR Verdict brand has that like tagline. You wouldn't have known that. But yeah. Everything else is if it was your first crack or even second crack, that's like people don't need yeah. to come up with their own artwork. That's great. <laughs> so I'll give you a little story about my background. Um, to be honest, like I've, I've not ever really worked for a company. I've always been kind of self-sufficient. I've worked for myself for about 12 years and um, I, you know, created um, like, so I'll go way back. I created like a 22 minute video when I was a freelance personal trainer to plug my online product and made a lot of mistakes. And, um, <laughs> you know, it didn't get the sales through that I wanted. And because I think as time went on, I've learned that, you know, you don't need to overcomplicate something. What you guys might deem as valuable in your product might not translate to your consumer. So you've got to always look at things through the eye of the consumer. like what would disengage you and what would engage you quickly what takeaways do you want to get from it and i've just listened to like multiple like audio books and just kind of really been self-efficient and teaching myself you know and i think anyone else could teach themselves these same tricks like you know everyone has that ability but i feel like a lot of it comes with experience and trial and error so i feel like i'm at a point now where i can analyze a brand quickly see what's going to work for you and what's not going to work with you because i think you know you've got to detach yourself from your personal um biases of like what you think is valuable over what people are perceiving as valuable <laughs> so i think just trial and error like and i i can tell you this boys i've had a lot of failed projects and it's only in recent years that i've i've scored a lot of home runs as it were so i'll use an american <laughs> <laughs> analogy um, <laughs> I feel like now I, I know brands, I know how to kind of sell the idea to people. And I think from that, as the years have gone on, something like That's this awesome. that would yeah. have normally took someone months and months to learn. But yeah, I've refined it to a quick enough process for myself now to be sufficient enough to do it. You know? It's definitely quick because, you know, we've been talking for a while and we had to postpone things here and there. But like, OK, here's the graphic. I'm like. It was like two days, I think, and you had this up because <laughs> yeah. we didn't, you didn't ask for anything and we didn't give you anything until then. And then bam, it's done. And you're like, okay, pop in and look at it. And I was like, holy crap, that was quick. Cause I was starting to like, I think it was like Wednesday before the show here. You're like, all right, I'm going to do this quick. I'm going to, I was starting to get a little nervous. Like, is this enough time for you to do what you got to do? <laughs> like, 
if, was, if, I, was... if I'm honest, do you want me to be brutally honest? It takes me sure. about 45 minutes to figure this all that's out. Crazy. So that's that's <laughs> like where where I've gotten to now. But like this it's is like the thing I don't want people... and stuff like that. 45 minutes from like yeah. I'm going to start looking at the VR verdict brand to being kind of done with like learning the whole thing and that's all in 45 minutes. Yeah. So I look through and it's like, okay, <laughs> what is the what is their thing? You know, and this is the thing, like I, I could have put your Discord, I could have put all the items of your things on there. I could have, you know, talked about all the guests that you've had on your show. There's so many things you could have done. But I mean, think of it from someone who wants to to know about it. You know, like it's just that it's yeah, I don't know. I think it's just a refining of my of my thinking process over the years. It's um mm-hmm. You know, I feel like I've had multiple iterations of just chucking loads of stuff up and realizing actually that's confusing, it's too much, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, did I ask you a question then? Did I go off on a tangent? Yeah. yeah. I mean, some people would, would think you know, 45 minutes just to place the thing, 45 minutes to, you know, sit down and start learning about a brand in order to come up. That's pretty, pretty good. Yeah, and I don't want anyone to interpret here. that as like, Oh well, then there's no value. I think yeah. no. This is why we charge. Yeah. We charge thirty UK pounds to to do this for some. Um, you know, people there. are paying paying us for the time that it's taken me to hone these skills to be able to whack this out quickly. You know, and rather yeah. than kind of being. Because I think a lot of people might hear what I've just said and be like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And then spend <laughs> loads luck. of time banging their head against the wall trying to figure out how to best market their brand. But yeah, It would take like, most you know, people it's... an hour just to do the background graphic and get it somewhat maybe decent. Yeah. So yeah, that's not accurate for most people. <laughs> when I was in design but, school, yeah. I worked with a lot of with a lot of freelancers and they're always like you start out you know and you charge so much per hour and it might take you five hours to do something and then three years later it'll take you two hours to do something but yeah should you cut yourself short and only charge that two hours no you're going to set your prices to what you're worth because if you can crank out a good piece of art in two hours versus three weeks that's more expensive than spending three weeks on somebody who's going to give you something that isn't there yet so Yes. Yeah, and time um, scale is not. Sorry, go on. I I keep cutting you off. Go on, PJ. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. It's just it just shows like if I'm a potential customer of yours, and I'm like, hey, I think that I'm interested. I want to check that out. That just tells me that I could, and I don't want to speak for you, but I could maybe have a booth up, up and running in in a, like a week or so, and just like yeah. how quick you can turn that around and just get it going. That's that's insane. Yeah. And this is the thing. So I have to painfully admit, I have a couple of people that I have been in endless back and forth of like, <laughs> no, that's not right. Like, and, you know, to the point where they've just given up and paid me to do it. So it's like, and it's not me being critical for the sake of being critical. It's being constructive, but then they can't, with even with that constructive criticism, not necessarily implement the, my experience to it, you know? So it's... um. So yeah, like you know, sometimes it is better to just bite the bullet and let me do it for you, you know, because I will yeah. just analyze it, get it done, and whack out a great thing. And like you know, there's still changes <laughs> that can be applied to this, but it's saved on file. It will take me a couple of minutes to kind of tweak it. But yeah, I just and, feel like. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure you also kind of have a standard. Like you don't want a first time person to come in here and see like the most hideous graphic they've ever seen, and like, oh, screw this, I'm out of here. Because so you also have a standard, I'm sure. Of what you want yeah. the appearance to be so it's so the, the takeaway yeah i think the takeaway that you want is someone to come in here right and be like oh so other oh, there are oh vr verdict okay they do podcasts awesome they want to know about people that do stuff in vr well guess what i'm in vr my friend does this i'll tell my friend about that oh they'll be here at this time okay i'll come back tomorrow you know like that's it you want that thought process to be that quick for the mm-hmm. person that's interested you don't want them to look at mountains of text, you know. Oh. You, like I, I didn't say I didn't put a text on there explaining what the requirements are to be on your show. It doesn't matter. You guys determine that when the really? person's there. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So like, do you know what I'm saying? You just put the key yep. things <laughs> that people need to yeah. know. You no, know, you don't have to put a 
elaborate amounts of text explaining terms and conditions and all this. Just and then so straight away someone will come here. They will take a mental note of when you're going to be here. No, and it might not happen straight away. The first week or two or three that like someone might not come here or they might revisit and then get reaffirmed by the fact that they've seen it again. Generally, repetition's key. So when they see it the third time, they're like, oh, I'm going to make a note of that. I'm going to come here and, you know, <laughs> and then they'll come here and they'll be able to speak to the show hosts themselves and ask about getting on your show, you know, and then create, yeah. help you guys create more content. And if they love your brand, they know that you sell merch and they can see a few items of it. And they know where to find your previous episodes. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah, that's it's it's what it's what the like the best things are like easy things like this. So like you're just like you know what's good when someone says, Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. 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 <laughs> and this is right up that alley. So <laughs> but keeping to a good, you know, level of, of visual clarity, you know, it's like you, I wonder if you get a lot of customers that are like graphic design is my passion, and they give you something from like early two thousands websites. And things are like, word, yeah, <laughs> you gotta tone that down because like, as a customer yeah. coming in, I'd be like, oh, I'm not gonna even look at the banner to see what you're at. If, like, if that doesn't make sense to me or draw me in, I'm, if it might still look, yeah. if it actively hurts my retinas and makes me look away, then no one's gonna look. Ooh. So <laughs> take the man's advice. <laughs> yeah like you just want to be able to pull focus and to the right place at the right time you know people's reading is always going to be from left to right well unless i think chinese that like, read up and down but you know generally yeah, people yeah. are going to go from left to right you know merch is important and obviously it generates you guys an income but that's not the immediate pull that we want we want people to read the yeah. statement know when you're here where they can hear you simple as that and then oh they do merch okay awesome you know like so this is this is the thing, and ultimately the, the call to action here is to get people here to talk to you about what it is you do. But I think on that note, boys, I would like to mention the Markets VR approved strip, which is what every store yeah. has. So I think PJ is going to move the trusty old cameraman a bit closer. <laughs> PJ is summoning the spirits here, <laughs> for people going away. <laughs> So I'll just explain this to <laughs> Jeremy. So every single stall has to come with a VR market approved banner. Now, guys, I appreciate that this has not been filled in with your details, but once we're up and operational, um, this will be filled with your information. So at a glance, and like we want continuity, so every single stall will have a banner that runs down the right-hand side of it, same dimensions, you know, same format, so anyone like as a customer will visit any store and know exactly where to look to extrapolate that information. And I think that's kind of key rather than having yeah. one store that has a website up here and another store that has a website down there. You want to simplify the process as much as possible. So we've got the markets VR approved strip and that is a, approved by myself and Dan. So we always double check like all the links and information you guys have sent us to make sure that we're redirecting your customers to the right place. Because, you know, we have to mention security. So we don't want any old avatar stood in your stool impersonating <laughs> you and telling the customer, yeah. like, oh, yeah, look, you just make a payment to my PayPal and then DMing them a message <laughs> and completely deviating yeah. them to really incorrect routes that could jeopardize their safety. Um, like, you would never get someone to verbalize their payment information, their delivery information that all goes through your official links and official processes so up here stall name so that would be your avatar name at the top i don't know if you can see that very clearly um yep. they, that person will be here every whatever day so the days that are highlighted so for example you're here two days or three days um they'll be highlighted as so and then here's the time zones of when that person will be here so in los angeles three to four this is an example panel toronto they'll be here between six and seven a.m 3 7 8 a.m etc so anyone at a glance can know when they're going to be here it's just you know validating the times that are on there but also on here and right. then like purchases can still be made without the stall owner present via these markets vr approved links so we have put the links in there that validate you know what your where your red bubble store is where they can find your podcast and then there's a button there 
that will open up a web browser within VR so they can view your products, services, etc. And then at the bottom, we put um, stall last updated. So I don't know if you find this, but you can go into any world and you're like, well, how long has this been here for? You know, like, <laughs> is this an old thing? Is it still operational? Is it alive? So that's why we have the stall kind of last updated signature. And then we've nice. also put here, you know, purchases can still be made without, without anyone being here because obviously they can just track your links. We ask them to reference markets VR at the checkout if there is an option to do so so that you guys know where that business has come from to validate the reason why you've got a stall in here you know nice. so yeah, this is why every store has this yeah and then in the middle of the stall, i don't know if you want to rotate the camera just to look here gotta apologize because there is a spelling error on here but we aren't open yet so when it is open it will be rectified <laughs> we've put marquests vr which will get sold so all the customers that come in here We'll see this forever looping, rotating screen that will show this basic information. So it's super important that we don't want people, you know, so we say here, your safety pixel markets, all owners will never ask you to verbalize payment or contact information. And if they do, then they're not real. Like they're not meant to be here. I'm um, sorry. So it's nice. on a 30 second loop. So it'll come back like, welcome to pixel markets. This is what we're called. Shop at virtual reality and get your products in reality. Um, so here, your links um, within the store, all information displayed within our stores are approved and can only be changed and amended by market VR. So you guys, all the people that are in here, can't do a change on it without referring to market. Yeah, like to the team via yes. email. So if you need to like process a change, then we do that for you. So then people know that there's a mediator between you know that's kind of yep. reviewing what's going out yeah sorry yeah, guys so... i do appreciate it. i've chewed your ear off <laughs> no no that's that's great what are the purchases I, that's a great actually thing work? yeah sorry. the purchase is actually that? sorry work. like when a, when a customer wants to purchase something see so you've got you know you can send them to the stores but like in here how do the purchases work? Do you yeah send them to their markets or so, so this is the thing right <laughs> So the issue is, and we are working with another developer at the moment to kind of help people make purchases within VR, but unfortunately that infrastructure doesn't exist as of mm -hmm. yet. So at the moment, people can click the button that was in your stool to see a preview of your website and what should be correct. Then if they've spoken to you and they're compelled by what it is you do, it would be enough for them to search you out on Google, you know, or refer to so you're just making the okay. yeah so you know like sometimes you would go to a shop and you would appreciate that the products on the stand are there for visual representation however if you want to buy one you have to go to the counter ask for it and get them to get it and i suppose it's a similar process here it's the same logic you know yeah sometimes you have the plastic sandwiches that make you hungry you know yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I like that that safety note, the firewall you got between the customer and the thing. Because I didn't even think when we first came in there. Usually my first thing is, okay, how could this break apart? But I didn't think of somebody coming in here and impersonating you and then impersonating yeah. the owner. You know, yeah. And like the thing is, like, the chances of that actually happening are probably pretty low. Like, I, yeah. you know, don't, but it could happen, you know? So I feel like, any customer that comes in here that reads this is like, oh, okay, so just you know, only use the VR approved strip to kind of validate what it is that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. because then you know it's been checked and <clears throat> overlooked by the team. Yeah. yeah, that's why having the standard strip on each in the same spot, like you're saying, mm -hmm. with identical everything, I think it just makes you feel safe and like more secure and trustworthy when you come in here. So. That's always a good thing. Yeah. And just keeping it uniform, you know, because I yep. feel like a lot of people, I, like that's the thing that's the beauty of social media is that you're all individual, but th the format is predictable. And I feel like that's ultimately what needs to be implemented in here. Everyone can be individual, have their brand, but the format needs to be universal, as in, you know, I know where to locate information on any stall. It shouldn't be difficult and it shouldn't vary from stall to stall. Hence why we implemented the markets VR approved strip. 
Yeah. Yeah. So just kind of curious if you want to give some examples of um, vendors you've had in here, because I know you've, you have some like with real world physical objects that ship around the world, but I think you've also uh, had or are going to have like virtual ones, like services, like, I make avatars. Yes. I'm going to pop in your have a booth. You can click a link and go right to that app at some point. You know, like what are your yeah. plans for all that? So, so that that's that's a great question. So like um actually I will mention that three of the stores that are coming in which we're still like you know we're, obviously we're not launched yet. We're not open. But the three stalls that we got in here are not actually anything to do with VR. People that have not used Oxpace who not got a VR headset. These are people that say, for example, this, this gentleman over here on stall number nine, he does a jewelry company. He found us through Instagram and we've been sorting a stall out. He does like kind of these really intricate wire based jewelry with like these precious gemstones. And, um, he is not even in VR. So like he just basically joined Alt Space through the 2D version. And when he's operational, he'll just be using his laptop next to him while he's making his jewelry, waiting for customers to come up and talk to him about what it is he does and makes orders. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the show and apologies if I did, but we did have a first iteration of the market. And I think it was shown in the video. That was the very first market that we did. And it had a few issues with glitching because it was just too many stalls in one location, too much data for the kind of like baseline headset. So we've simplified it now into batches of 10 market stalls. And then, so this is like just 10 in here. And then obviously from 12 to 23, you go through that portal into another version of the market and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, so on here, we've done another option. So there's a button that you can press, which obviously opens up Sorry, I'm walking away from your cameraman. I appreciate that. Oh, I got you. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So there's a um, like a button that would open up the website, but also there's people that have um, like their own virtual worlds within virtual reality. So there's also a teleport button. So people that come in here that are familiar with the realm of virtual reality can hit that teleport button and be taken into a world that's completely dedicated to that person about their stall. So they can hit it portal in and then someone can awesome. elaborate on their goods and services and you can be taken into a world from market vr to that person's world and if they develop assets and 3d things then you can go there to see it the thing that we wanted to do in here like i said it was just keep it uniform and keep it simple and have a simple basic statement message that compelled your audience to go and follow what it is you do and then by all means take them off and show them your world what you do but the only requirement is, is that if you have a portal, you have to come back to this world. So, I mean, they don't have to come back, but they have to host a portal that brings them back to the original market that they came from. So you can whisk people off, you know, <laughs> fan show them all the fancy things you do and then say, yeah, that goes back to the market it's there. And then they'll portal back in here and they can carry on looking through the other stalls. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. PJ, was that your original question? I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I love that. That's awesome. It just your passion is amazing. I love it. Um, the question was just like different goods and services offered in here, like between physical uh, and okay. digital. But yeah, with that portal linking thing, like, well, from our booth, it would be really awesome. Someone comes up, we're explaining it. They've never seen or heard the show. Up in there, it takes them to a build of our our clubhouse. We call it where we do our show in VR. And kind of like give them a little tour because we have plans to. You know, expand that and stuff. That just would be really cool. Like, hey, let me just show you. And you just throw up in there and yeah. pop back. And that's really people awesome. People can visit this. Like, uh, yeah. Build a version of our booth, like in an home space world and link it back and forth. It'd be fun. Yeah. I think that this is the problem. The, like, you know, like we're still, like, I think we're, we're ahead of the curve at, at the moment. And it's only ever going to get more immersive cross platform. Um, but at the moment, you know, you have to kind of operate within the ecosystem that you're in. So right mm -hmm. now we're operating within old space. So unfortunately, we can only take people to other old space based worlds and assets. Yep. Um, but yeah, like obviously you guys operate on a different platform, which would be fantastic if like an avatar could just whiz off onto another platform, <laughs> see your world yeah. and whiz off back to here. 
And I think these things will come if these companies don't get too possessive of owning the market. You know, yeah, exactly. you provide a good service <laughs> and that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but oh. like, like you said, PJ, we do operate. So like, for example, the jewelry company over there is someone that has an Instagram account that creates their own real jewelry that in reality, and you can order a physical real thing in virtual reality that's delivered in reality. But then there's also people that develop digital assets like in virtual worlds, which you can also buy from them. And then there's also people that host events and services. So I suppose you guys kind of come under that bracket. Where you can promote and talk about your events and services. Yeah. yeah. It gives you a little platform, like say we had an event coming up, you could, you know, get details here at our markets booth and just have a little meet up there. And um, yeah. one thing I do think, we, I don't think we've pointed out yet, and I think is awesome. Every vendor you have, one of the requirements is if they have physical goods, they have to be able to ship worldwide or there's yeah. no booth, correct? 100%. I do Because the I thing is, that's... the nature of the metaverse that we operate, anyone around the globe can be in here. I don't want someone to come in here who to a store that provides physical jewelry and they're like, oh, I only ship within the UK or I only ship within the USA. I, you know, the requirement is that you ship globally because I don't want anyone to come in here and not be able to get something that they might like. Because that only leaves a sour taste in their mouth, you know, like and a bad experience. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there has to be global platforms or global e-commerce. Yeah, I know original. when we were first um, talking about doing this episode, at, and I read that or you said that to me, and I'm like, oh crap, do our ship worldwide? And I went and checked, and I'm like, oh, duh, the first sale we made was to a friend of ours in Japan. So I'm like, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was on a, a store recently looking at stuff, and everything I wanted to like look at was like, Oh, this person ships to 31 countries, but not the USA. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then why am I wasting time <laughs> looking at it? <laughs> so affronted. Yeah. You know? yeah. And that's the thing. Like, it would, um, obviously, it would, like, you know, represent that brand uniquely um, in a negative light. You know, they're hosting a stall mm -hmm. in here and they're, they're denying two or three customers because of their shipment, it's only going to leave a sour taste in their mouth about that brand. But not only that, it's going to leave a sour taste about Markets VR and what we're providing. So yeah. like, we don't, we'll yeah, we'll like, so, <laughs> no, we don't, we, we want everyone that comes in here to all be a part of it. You know, it's like, because of where you are, like, it's not a no, like, it can't be a no for them. <laughs> yeah. I think that's yeah. also a, a somewhat, call it maybe a baby step to, to getting to like a, a metaverse environment where all inclusive <laughs> having cats before this about you know meeting and talking to people but it's just you don't have to think of those hurdles and worry about that as a concern i think that's awesome that's just yeah. helping things move and progress forward so. yeah definitely and um, you know most services do operate globally you know so and if you don't oper operate globally then you know that that could be something that you can consider as a growth step like we shouldn't have to step back as markets vr if anything it should be on you to step further forward to make your brand more compatible with what it is we're trying to offer I have had some kind of um you know pointed emails about the fact that <laughs> someone can have a stall in here based off the fact that it's geolocation it's not discrimination it's inclusivity the fact that we're not allowing you to be in here we're not discriminating against you we're encouraging you to be more inclusive you know so yeah invalidation is not necessarily us discriminating against you know it's actually <laughs> we're telling you to be more inclusive yeah, <laughs> yeah quite the opposite and i think it's it's super interesting you as a digital market um and maybe i'm wrong here but from what i've you've kind of shown me and i've seen is that you've actually started off with more physical um, merchandise and you've started yeah. off with more people not in vr than in vr and i, I just kind of that's a, another step forward and just getting people that don't have VR that at least they know what it is and it's an option. Like that blows my mind. Like it just seems like you'd yeah. have way more digital and other things, but don't. So I think pretty cool. The, 
the standpoint that I took on it is that I think a lot of people want to create this super technically challenging, like um, impressive interface. Um, and I think all that stuff will come, but I don't think the person that sells jewelry in the real world or the person that sells candles in the real world, you know, or sells real things in the real world are ready to make that jump from here's me hosting products on Instagram, having something yeah. that I'm completely clueless about. It's kind of the segue between is what we're going for. Um, we want people to be able to easily with a little push adapt to what it is they're trying to do and once they're their foot in they will understand the iterations that will follow they will then be more on board with the idea of then having a physical like you know not physical sorry like a three-dimensional gram that someone can pick up you know but i don't think it's necessary at this point you know, we're trying to bridge the gap between the person that would otherwise not use this to use it you know without being yeah. too technically difficult yeah and those things will kind of just, you know, as the technology grows and proceeds, like those steps will just come to where someday you probably like the person selling Julie, like there will be a little 3D model of it you can pick up and look at and that'll be neat, but not quite needed yet. So, <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, it's it's still early days. So let's not run before we walk. I think that's the, nope. the, the mantra. <laughs> It's like yeah. let let right let everyone slowly walk and climatize to the idea of this before they climatize to the idea of all these wonderful, amazing three D graphics where they're completely associated from that outcome. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't you want to solve problems that don't exist, and then are you maybe maybe this is fine. Maybe if you added physical objects to it, maybe there's something you didn't think about, like you put them too soon and pushed people away. And you couldn't yeah. pop up a booth in a week, you know, because there's more yeah. technical stuff to it. Yeah. And I think it would confuse people if one stool suddenly had loads of, like, you know, these assets in there, and then one was just a banner. There's going to be a discrepancy, whereas if everyone's got these 2D banners, like, inside the world, where they can come up and talk to a 3D avatar, and that is really understandable and translatable to yeah. multiple people. Whereas if suddenly one's got loads of videos and glitz and glamour and one hasn't and one's got loads of physical assets, I think it would just confuse people. Like, oh, so what, what do I do? How do I buy this? Or so, you know, like, yeah. this isn't too different <laughs> different to a website that would explain all your information. And that's enough. Yeah. You just need yeah. to sell the idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see because we used to do our show in Spatial Ape, which was... Um... Like a meetup for developers and it was awesome and there's people in there all Trade the time show. yeah i'm excited to see like just this place kind of full of vendors and like meeting other vendors and just coming in here and chatting with them and you know i can see this really yeah. kind of expanding into just a place to come look at and i think i kind of said this last time we talked in here you know it kind of reminds me of going to like a renaissance fair or something where you just kind of check out each booth you know, and if it's always changing, always being added to, um, yeah. which I think maybe, I don't know how it'll work with the PC camera guy, but um, each set of stalls, like you said, you have 10 stalls per each, and then the layout and kind of backgrounds change, so it's like a different environment. You know, just as a customer, just spending an afternoon walking through all the markets, chatting with the people, I, that, that sounds really awesome. Cause that's yeah. why I go to Renaissance fairs just to check everything out and you know mm -hmm. chat and see things and yeah I, I, yeah it's exciting and it's quite nice when we had the first iteration of the market there was loads of people just hanging out so it's quite nice like that's why we kind of keep it a, a bit of a social space between so like you know the con like a few people came in don't necessarily have to gate crash one person stall they can all kind of congregate <laughs> in the middle and then dart off you know so even stall owners were out in the middle talking that if someone was at the store they'd be like all right guys back in a minute and went over and be like hey yeah. how's it going do you have any questions i'm the owner of this store <laughs> you know yeah so yep. it was really nice and we were, when we were open before it was it was amazing um but then we had to shut it down because of issues so we're relaunching now we're not open yet so we're going to hold off until we get much many more stalls ready for an open day rather than kind of drip feeding it in as we did before yeah, that'd be really neat. And and myself as, you know, I don't know what you'd call us, but having a podcast and then like I stream 
when I play games and stuff. Like, I would love to stream just to, you know, when I'm in the booth for the when you know my slotted time, to stream it and yeah. kind of see like, hey guys, how's it going and this and that. And like, I don't know. Yeah, it just sounds fun. I think the the the, the options that will come are limitless and i think the yeah. where it's at now is nice <clears throat> keep it simple walk before we run and we'll get there and i think bridging that gap between audiences that don't otherwise use vr it's a really key i mean you know not just trying to pitch to people that already operate or understand vr you know yeah. <laughs> i'm just gonna need an apron and a broom so i can just kind of stand in my booth and sweep, sweep. So people yeah well, you're not doing anything <laughs> <laughs> digital dust, digital dust. Yeah. <laughs> do the, the iconic, you know, I'm turning my back like, oh hey there, welcome in. <laughs> yeah. Didn't see yeah, you. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it is lovely. Oh. So like, you know, we want people to just be able to like, you know, work at home. Like because a lot of people do work at home now and have their digital stall front like this. And then they can just be doing things at home, like working at home. And then whenever they hear someone, they can just swipe their screen and be straight in and ready to talk to any customer that has any questions about what it is they do. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is just super intelligent as of itself, but then also just like, again, bringing non-VR people into the VR world and just kind of spreading that knowledge further than it is. It's just it's awesome. Yeah, we're good. We're getting a lot of interest, which is exciting. So. And we're getting a lot of people talking to us and we're, we're in, but the thing is we haven't got a definitive launch date yet so a lot of people are just waiting now like we've got companies that are ready to go in but they're just waiting because like i said we, we only want to open when it's ready like as in yeah. we don't want a haphazard week start to it you know <laughs> we want all the yep. <laughs> yeah like you know so so that just another reason if you don't mind me i think i don't know if you're wrapping up now but just to kind of um talk about what we learned from the first experience over this one so in the first one it was a massive market with multiple stores but people obviously operate in a multitude of time zones loads of different time zones so what we're doing now is because they're small batches of 10 or 11 so this is actually 11 sorry and then if you go through that portal there's another market in a different formation but and also another batch of 11 um it's corresponding them per time zone so say for example people that are in PST, we would put all the PST time zones together so that all the stalls in PST would be here at the same time or within the same day overlapping times. Because, right. you know, these the way these platforms operate is that the world that's most popular will get put to the top based off the amount of users that are in it. So the most popular destination. So that's how we're going to nice. do it. So we're going to start before it was haphazard. So we'd have someone from the UK in and then a couple of hours later, someone from the US would come in. So there'd always be people in here, but it would always be low figures. So now mm -hmm. we're waiting to get enough people to get their businesses in here to group them together into these batches of 10 or 11s and then have like, you know, five or six schools open at a time because they're actually there because of their time zone. It's more relative. Yeah. yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. One way to beat the... the... <laughs> freaking time zone issue <laughs> yeah let's put them together in time zones <laughs> <laughs> nice <clears throat> i wonder if there's a way we can you know, like a <clears throat> like a guest book and come in and say i visited your shop and that would let the shop owner know that hey i have interest at these times maybe i show up at a different time because yeah. again if we pick like you know 8 a.m on a sunday well is that gonna work for anybody yeah. else um, but I think the good thing is, is, as a stall owner, when you're there, is to ask people for feedback on your stall. There's no shame mm -hmm. on that. And like, you know, if you're reciprocal to it and, you know, not too in your ego about it, remember that, you know, one person's critique is might be a reflection on them. It's not necessarily a reflection on you. Right. But then if that same critique comes back three or four times, then maybe take it on board. We had that issue with um, Dates VR. So, you know, we had a few people critique something that we were doing. And um, I think it's quite easy for me to be like, oh, well, how dare you get out? You know, like, and get kind of <laughs> caught up in my ego about it. It's like, actually, if a couple of people are saying it, then there's probably some truth to it. So then implement it. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, 
there's no right and ready formula at this stage in the game. I think there's no tried and true tested way that this has been proven yet. You know, so like, it, I think you have to have an element of like, okay, here's what we've done. What do you think? What feedback do you have? And take those notes on board and just relay it to the team and we ad adapt it accordingly until we find that sweet spot. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. To that same point, what he was kind of mentioning, do you guys have like a way for like metrics for like how many people came to this section of booths or each individual booth, like if they click on something or? Yeah, so there is a way that we can um, run your button through like an analytic. So say, for example, we could run a URL that then opened your URL kind of thing so that we could show who's been clicking it. And we've not implemented that yet. That is something that's in the pipeline. Okay. Um, but we do have world joins, not necessarily stool joins. So we could say how many people came into this world with a batch of 11 stools. Sure. Um, but we can't give you exact, like, you know, your stool readings, you know? Hear that, everyone? Come push our button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Push button. Yeah. Push your button. But it's great, like, you know, you will have people that listen to your show that will probably want to come and chat to you and knowing that they can come in here and actually talk to you at a set time, you know, yeah. I think is actually wonderful because you'll actually be talking to your, your fans or you know, people that have a story to tell and, you know, it might just be another yeah. avenue to get people on the show, which is good. And obviously you can push your merch if people are longtime fans. I will have to say, so there's... Sorry, I know I'm kind of driving the narrative a bit, and I do apologize. I just have no, a lot no, of no. ideas and a lot of passion. It's all flowing out of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. So like, it flow. Yeah, we. Um, so anyone that wants a stall in here, the first month is completely free. You no, know, because awesome. we do appreciate that we are starting something. We don't necessarily have a solid proof of concept yet, and whether it will really fly. So that's why we say to people, you can have your first month here free, get your stall set up, see how it goes. And at the end of the month, if it wasn't for you, then there's no hard feelings. We go our separate ways, you know. Um, I think a lot of people are trying to charge off the bat for something that hasn't quite been proven yet. And I'm definitely not about that. Like, the, I know we're not about that. We're definitely wanting to get people <laughs> in here, try it to see how it would work for them. Obviously, understand that the results, take the results with a pinch of salt because... Um, you know, it takes a while to establish a brand and establish sure. a reputa rep yeah, a reputation and what, what those things are. So yeah, we always say, you know, you guys can have the first month free. And if you want, you know, you can buy a month at a set fee. You can get three months at a reduced fee or you can get the year for a further reduced fee. Then they have that stall for the year, you know, depending on how they yeah. feel it was effective. Yeah. And to be honest, I thought the, the rates were like, super fair like if you're, if you're a shop selling things, like we're a podcast we have some merch but our main thing is our podcast it's a little different um yeah but like like the jewelry person over there like that's like that's how they make their living like i think that's just opens up an avenue and for the price you guys have i think it's so fair to get not only yeah more sales but just get your name out there and in different markets you know no pun intended yeah um yeah, <laughs> I think it's worth it. Totally worth it. Well, the thing is, like, I could charge the price of what um a physical place would be, but like, let's be real, I have no over. Like, I'm not going to be disgusting about the pricing. Like, it's not on. Like, you're like, I'm not going to say to you, you have to pay the same price as a physical store. I just don't think that's yeah. fair. Like, you know, I don't have to. If a tree breaks can import another one in a moment i'm not going to charge the fee of what it would take to clean a real venue you know these pricing yeah. strategies based off of like real brick and mortar venue are justified given the fact of what you have to do to maintain it whereas here yeah. it's built i don't need to maintain it i just need to change your images when you need to change the images that fee i think directly represents the truth of the administration of what needs to be done here I'm not yeah. in the game of ripping people off. I want people to, I want this vision to be realized and charge fairly for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You saying all that makes me go back to my Renaissance fair thing. And like, there's no um, journal trough you have to clean. Or something. <laughs> there's yeah. No horse manure, like all that stuff. It's digital. So we don't yeah. have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. 
the thing is, the only thing that um you know that I have to do is I have to maintain a relationship with the vendors in here. You know, the vendors yeah. are responsible for the relationship with the customers. So, like for me, I'm dealing with eleven stalls in here. You guys are dealing with multiple customers. You know, so like I'm realistic about what it takes for me to run it and what I would like to be paid for in order to do it. Yeah, not about what my greed wants me to take for it. Yeah, <laughs> and I know yeah. I'm like a diss, and I'm not dissing anyone. Like you know, each to their own. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's super it's interesting. Like, having another world, <clears throat> like, <clears throat> pardon me, doing a, a revamp of our app just for podcasting and stuff. So we get that kind of set up. It'd be nice to import it over here into a world and like the YouTube integration because we could have a YouTube like, hey, if you're an audience member, this is what can like do a little YouTube video about each section of your again, ours is just a booth, but like get yeah, even a VR game. You just have like a little import like the intro level or the lobby level and have some YouTube videos about so you say, hey, if you like my game, check that. I just go through that portal and they go get information, yeah. come back and be like, well shit, it's better than a website than Yeah, you guys can host world. your own world. And actually, the store that we're stood at now, the guy's an asset developer, so he builds worlds in in alt space. So, say for example, well, we gave him then... a free plug because I got his logo know, in here for the last twenty shot, minutes. Yeah. So he, I kind of feel like he might owe us some help on that regard. <laughs> yeah. He's he's a good friend of mine, and I'm sure he would be willing to help out. Um, and he he charges reasonable, so it's good. Um, so yeah, like you know, for example, you could have a portal at this stall. And then just take someone off into a world of all the things you do, which you can plug your YouTube thing and people can hit play on a player and watch sections of previous shows and have all the merch and all the images spread out so people can really have a look for everything you do. Again, like you've got to think of this place as a hub to tantalize mm -hmm. your audience with what it is you do, not give them everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's so bizarre to me to the power of VR, like, it's just amazing because I would, in the real world, never be excited or even think about, like, working retail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in here, like, I'm excited to people come, you know, check out the booth and chat and, like, merch, you know, is great, but it's not like I'm never going to, like, push it or, like, you know, suggestive sell and all that, but, it, you know, it's just helpful for us, but um, it's just exciting, and that that's just, like, we are turning some real life thing that I would never do purposefully and make it fun and entertaining. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And I think you will get people come here to just visit you guys. Like, I think your fans that listen to your show, you know, that in what is you guys, they would probably just want to come in and talk to you. So, it's... even and they would. Oh. They would know someone and they would tell you about someone who should be on your show and that kind of networking yeah yep. and it's good and to talk to your fans you learn more from them yeah, yep. yeah. exactly that's yeah. kind of how when we were in spatial ape again not to go with something else but that we encourage people to come before and after the show because you could just join in no matter who you were and be part of the conversation and stuff and we're getting back to that but not there yet so yeah just hearing things from your actual fans and like oh it'd be cool if you guys did this and it's like you know what that's amazing i would have never thought of that like just that yeah. simple little chat the value yeah. of the, the community group aspect and this is weird like this is nostalgic for me again i do miss our spatial labor i think they i don't i don't know what happened to them they closed down um but i miss the, the trade show element because you'd be over here talking to other people it just kind of feel pleasantly crowded you can see this place this scratches that same it and oddly enough like pandemic hasn't changed my life very much because i'm just kind of a loner homebody anyway so it hasn't really done much <laughs> yeah. but girlfriend and oh, i need like... some specific yeah <laughs> we need some specific from a mall of all places like a year or so we just kind of ran yeah. in ran through the bookstore entry and did stuff and i kind of got nostalgic for being a kid going to malls when i always hated them that you did going to the mall but then since yeah. i hadn't been in a place like that for a while which would be like this it was kind of like Oh, this is kind of necessary for a human experience, but now especially with COVID and like this, when this place has a few people, you know, running through it, I think it'd be in, without any updates, without any changes, it'd just be kind of a 
charming place to be, you know, like PJ yeah. brushing the dirt off the digital dirt off our digital floor. <laughs> be, yeah. uh, be fun. So I'm kind of excited once it launches to go check the shop out. Oh, yeah. you know, guys, given that you've given, you know, Markets VR this exposure and we have got a few more interviews in the pipeline, which is great. It, like we'll we'll definitely give you guys a, a free store as a thank you, you know. So like that will always oh, be yours, and thanks, you know, yeah. and no, no, it's okay. No, obviously, like it's it's a scratching of each other's back situation. You know, you're helping share light about what it is we're doing, and we would like to in turn return the favor. So it's like, you know, it, what would be great is that stall number eleven will always be yours of the first market, which is there's like so the numbers go up and up and up. So this mm -hmm. will be the portal, what the main portal one. But there will be a hub where people can jump from, like you know, markets one to eleven or to whatever seventy to whatever. So, but this is like the original, <laughs> the OG, yeah, the OG yeah. market. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can put this like was... the markets VR little cute little market icon like on our podcast permanently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just to show people that you have a market. We have actually yeah. got a PNG for that if people want to use it available on markets. Be like, it's kind of we got it so people can plug it and then show where they're always going to be. And you can has a little blurb so that people know that you're going to be awesome. there. Just <laughs> says what times you're there. Yeah. I'm sure, when we good. do the, we can just pin it somewhere in our booth. Just always be there. Yep. Yeah. And we've got to, gonna, um, so we've actually got physical stickers printed as well for some of the stores that, so I haven't told many people this and I will tell you guys. So there's a few, shops local to me physical shops that sell their goods and services around the world and we've got like stickers that they can put in their shop window to show that they have a digital st store as well and they're actually operating in a real shop in a real town that's awesome that's awesome yeah so like there is some exciting things coming it's just you know how long is a piece of string at this point we don't know when the, yeah. the vision will be truly realized you know so i think it's just kind of people like ourselves that are really kind of pushing this narrative that i think will you know the more people that come in here the more people see oh actually i should get a stool you know and i should have this yeah, yeah. it's and if you could you know again i don't we know how everything stool because <laughs> yeah, like, i better. think like people need to see your one <laughs> hang on let's just move jeremy quickly on jeremy <laughs> cameraman you can do it <laughs> <laughs> Here he is, or oh, he hasn't got good control over Jeremy, though. That's the issue. There you go. Get this one in in shot. There we go. <laughs> what I was saying, um, let me work over here. Like, you know, right now, like, shops have been, you know, social media exploded, and this might sound to younger people, but it wasn't always a thing. So, you know, I see those taglines that have, like, you know, Find us on Foursquare and this and that and that. And if you could get markets on that same banner and those same logos and all that, like that would be amazing. So, you know, like when you go to like a food place and they would have like a Just Eat sticker outside or whatever variation you guys have in the States. Like, um, do you have Deliveroo? Like you uh, you might call it something different over there. Like What's Uber like a food? And... Yeah, yeah, Uber like Eats. So yeah. Some of these food takeaway places will have a sticker on their window saying Uber Eats. So we've yep. got stickers for these shops that are going to be coming in here saying in market cigar like and they yeah. put the sticker on their window to show that they have a digital store where you can just go up and speak yeah. to them digitally rather than having to go to their physical store because again i hate to keep going back to the renaissance fair thing but um like my wife will talk to like there's all kinds of stuff like soap candles like all that and instead of buying stuff and carrying it around all day through the, the entire experience, you know, you, you'll get someone's card or link or something. Um, yeah. I think that's awesome too, because again, we just went on vacation and we were out, you know, shopping. We didn't want to carry a bunch of crap. So we just get their details and order stuff online. So I think that's really freaking smart. And that's, I hope that works really yeah. well. Uh, and what's great, like, you know, with the previous iteration of the store, what's wonderful is that everyone that owns a store has kind of got your back. So like when you're not there, another owner will come over and just be like, oh yeah, you know, so and so is not here at the moment. But you know, if you've got any questions, I might be able to answer it for you. You know, like, and it's kind yeah. of nice because you they become your neighbors because the people that generally yeah. get in these stores and where their place is generally where they stay. Um and obviously nice. there is a 
you know sometimes we change it around but you'll you'll get matey with the person who owns that store and that store and like you would have spoken you would have interacted and they would have they'll vouch for you if someone's at the door just be like oh yeah they're normally here on this day this time you know just kind of just what's written on your store yeah that is so amazing is what's lovely like yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so just just for the sake of your listeners if you don't mind just like a call to action for anyone that's interested in getting a stall in here um, they can find us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, and that's at Markets VR. Um, so you just search Markets VR. And it's this little logo, which I think you've seen in a few places here, but it's like a little um, like rectangle shape um, yeah, icon. It's on our video overlay of the entire episode. So Oh, brilliant. Yeah. And we'll also so have people... all your links in the show notes of both the video and the audio. So click on those links and in touch with mark here you won't regret it yeah and also guys there's that store that's actually next to vr verdict is available so first come first serve <laughs> we could be neighbors <laughs> we could hang out and buy stuff together <laughs> yeah so if anyone basically it's messages great. um messages us on instagram facebook or twitter um if you send like direct message us your email um or you can email info at market com, um, and we'll send you a pdf that's a step-by-step -step guide on how to get set up in here which is super simple just like some do's and don'ts um the pricing strategy so it explains how much it costs the first month's free yeah you know everything you would need to know to get set up and then if you're stuck on your stool design which can happen and there's you know we can tackle that for you and get that turnaround done pretty quick and have something similar like this set up that best represents your brand no yeah and again that that first month free like how how are you gonna pass that up how can you miss <laughs> and i'm assuming uh, you apples? said you were not launched Sorry. yet so if someone was inquiring about that first month free i'm assuming it would start from like when the day you open the yeah. doors and yeah. okay yeah it doesn't start from when when we've done your um yeah like it's once it's in and once we're open and we're operational again operational again um and also we're we're in the process so we've we're, we've actually got two more interviews in next week we're looking for someone to be the head of sales for us so someone that would be in here in avatar form because we're doing a few more recruitment fairs in the weeks coming for someone to represent dates vr to talk to potential business owners to talk them through anything that they don't understand you know, you probably understand what's happening in, in here now if you're watching this and thus far. If anyone that doesn't know what's happening can come to these fairs, speak to a representative, and they can get you set up. And the good thing is they're on commission as well. They get paid and it's commission. So if anyone's interested yeah. in that, they actually get paid for a shift to work the floor, wow. explain to businesses how it works. And for every recruited store that they get, once they go past that free phase and start paying, they get a commission. Yeah, so... Yes. You know, we want it to all grow together. Like, I don't you know, no greed here. It's about kind of making some, a, a vision come true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, now you can get a job in, in VR. <laughs> <laughs> Reading a resume or a CV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, we're not, it's just um, someone's ability to relay what I've said confidently. I don't really care about your qualifications. If you're good at, selling the idea that's all i care about so you know it doesn't matter about your cv i just care that you are you know the, the 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 person will come in here and i'll talk to them and just be like right sell this idea to me and if they can do that well then they've got it you know it doesn't i, I think yeah i i need to, to see that you're you're a good person that can talk and relay an idea to the masses that's what matters yeah. to me experience is irrelevant i mean so your qualifications are irrelevant I think experience is important yeah. and your confidence is what I'm looking for. Yeah. I feel like you just have to be able to sell a show the brand. Yeah. You just have to be able to sell a ketchup popsicle to someone in white gloves and then you're in. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, most of the stall owners talk about the benefit people that come in anyway who would be interested and that bodes well for them. Unfortunately, stall, stall owners don't get commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think the stall owner becomes a sales guy and covers the shift, and that's his time in the stall, also selling stuff I'm in the area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love yeah, it would be taking idea. the simple approach and just kind of looking to grow and, like you said, not be greedy and just be fair and and just, yeah, you know, grow every part of it at the same time with as as well with, like, VR as a platform and all that. I, I, I love that. Yeah, and I just want people to have a nice time in here, you know, like I, like as store owners, you, I want you to want to spend your time in here. You know, like, yeah. you, you should feel compelled to be like, oh, I've got to do my shift, like, log in. And then people will just come up and talk to you, you know, and you know. really, you're and enabling people to talk. And you were saying, like, people with physical shops that aren't in VR, like, you're kind of saying, like, that's the route that everyone should take, but I don't think you believe me when I said this, but like with the time that I'm planning to be in here, like I'll probably be in here in VR mostly because I'm weird like that. Like I can just sit in a space and like think and like do things. Um, yeah. I'll probably be the only one like that for a while until you know things really take off for, for VR. But <laughs> I think like, you have no is... idea how long like Wookie and I sit in our booth before and after yeah, shows just and just talk <laughs> oh, that's brilliant but the thing is like say for example someone that has to physically do something in the physical world yeah you know like exactly for example that gentleman over there that has a jewelry store um yeah. it's not going to benefit him to be in a vr headset so yeah. and it's also just enables him to be free with his hands with like physical things exactly. in the real world and then he can just look at his screen and talk to anyone that comes up and talks to him so yeah i you know obviously there will be times in here where it won't be busy and there'll be times when yeah. you might just be stood here like there's loads of idle avatars around the stalls and then there'll be moments yeah. when it is busy and then you will be fully engaged so yeah i definitely discourage stall owners to use your headsets but instead access <laughs> it via a, a desktop yeah i mean like either way you're editing an episode or if i'm you know coding something or doing some research we can both have the 2d version up and then just be talking back and forth like we're chatting during that even though nothing's going on you probably see us yeah. in here like this, <laughs> or, or like, <laughs> like Jeremy over there, I'm like, <laughs> just yeah. Back. But it's good. So, like, you know, you could just have it open and just be available, and like, you know, it might not click with people straight away, but as time progresses, people know you're always going to be there at that time, and they might just come in and say hi. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Um, is there anything we didn't share? Oh, I had one quick question. So in the video, and you might have already answered this. I might have been looking around. At this, uh, in the video, there was like tiered, like multiple shops on tiers, and it was all complicated. Is that what you you kind of simplified into this design? Yeah. So that was the first iteration in the advert. Unfortunately, it just came with just too many issues and bugging out, and it was crashing people's Oculus headsets. And obviously, we need to accommodate for the most base level of VR. Right. Because I think the sad reality is, is, you know, I'm an Oculus owner and I think a lot of people are. And CPUs on these things are quite low. They can't deal with like the loading that I wanted it to have. But that's why we <laughs> had to batch them like this into smaller markets, yeah. then portals into we other ones. Sure, like, so that I, I like how it looks. Yeah, I definitely like yeah. it. Look, I'm on a Quest 1, so I probably appreciate the simplification without knowing because yeah. I didn't the other one. So. So you had no glitching issues in here, but the problem is with the other market, people would come in their Oculus and have such a terrible glitching situation that they would crash out. And then that was when it was starting to tarnish the brand. I don't want people mm. to have a bad association with markets. VR. I want them to have a, yeah. like a, oh, it's a simple, easy. Yeah, that's what we want to kind of make sure we get in the bag. Yeah, that's 100 yeah. percent. Accurate, though, because again, going back to Spatial Ape, like we about 45 There's minutes into our, our chat you'd kind of like fall through the floor a little bit. And then like every episode, every guest was like, they'd sink into their chair and be like, what the hell is this? Like, and we, made, we had fun and it was fine, but like it definitely like, there were things that would happen where it's like, that's really kind of a showstopper and it's really distracting. <laughs> yeah. I forget about it. Like, you know, rose colored glasses or, you know, how you view the history, but it was, it was a lot of fun. But yeah, we had a raised platform and they gave us like a table and chairs and it was quaint. And then, like PJ said, somebody would fall through that and be like standing just on the floor part of the race platform would no longer have the 
physical collider or whatever. You can walk on Right, like, yeah. Like, oh, something's about to happen, and somebody dropped. Or you Wood just, guy. <laughs> wouldn't nobody be able to see him? Like, we'd be interacting here, but your avatar would disappear for other people. But you, you wouldn't know. Yeah. You, you know, it, was, it was starting to degrade after about a half. Yeah. Yeah. And it's definitely a wiser choice. Those were big area. That was a big area. <laughs> Yeah, I honestly, guys, I really appreciate your time. Like, um, oh, I, I feel like I've said everything that I needed to say about market scale and some. I mm-hmm. feel like I've, like I said, I've warned <laughs> you previously that I can go off on a right yep. tangent, and I, I'm sure I did, and I'm sure I'm listening back to this and be like, oh my god, we'll hone it in a bit. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> um, half the reason we do the podcast is just to hear um developers passions and you, you know whether you're i don't know if you are quite a dev but i i think you are i mean you created this but um yeah just to hear that passion and just to to see where it goes and grows into and it, like that's just so interesting to me anyway and i love it so i don't too. feel bad about that at all like <laughs> uh, before we sum up i would love to if you don't mind take you guys into the next section of the market just to show the different formats but you'd have to push yeah. um jeremy brett through For sure um first and then we can Coming follow him in <laughs> after and then yeah and then uh like i said i'd love to come on your guys shows to talk about dates vr as well because that's a yeah. lovely little platform that we've done it'd be working all right cameraman here you go <laughs> see you in a minute that's good <laughs> Okay, so yeah, can you see? So like they're they're all of different variations, of the different social formats of like how the stalls are laid out and there's different kind of skies and but then people could walk through here and it's another batch of stalls with their own little sub communities of like stall owners that all know each other and all friends. And then That's it neat. just yeah. continues on. I like how and this then... one's more like an alleyway, like a they're all kind of facing yeah. each other. It's kind of cute. I like it. And it's quite nice as well that people can still stand in the middle and feel like they're not reaching on someone's stool. They can still kind of congregate and have conversations in the kind of hallway, as it were. Yeah. yeah. That's where that proximity yeah. chat really helps out, too. <laughs> yeah. 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 Definitely. And then, <laughs> like, so every 10, they can jump into another one and another batch. And they have all been built, but we're just not opening them yet. So they're all different formations. So, like, the first one was in a square. This one's a long one. And then you go through there, and there's another 11 stools in a different formation. Circle. Yeah. yeah you can do yeah, MC Escher's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like stairs going up the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah, really that's, cool. That's basically it. This is how market VR works. And um, I'm excited to see what it brings, and if people are interested in getting involved, then I look forward to hearing from them. You know, yeah, very cool. <laughs> to be a part well, of it. <clears throat> thanks for you know thinking of us and hopping in and sharing and um, the booth. Obviously, I can't wait to see you guys launch and yeah. get in there and talk to people. And yeah, I'm excited. Hey guys, I really appreciate your time. And um, if yeah. you know you want to meet up again and talk about dates VR, that's something else I feel very passionate about and talk about because I met my now fiance in here, you know, in in old space, and it's you know that's the power of the, the VR world. So I'd love to talk more about that story if you'd ever have me. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure, that'd be great. It's good to set up. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I guess. I don't know if you have to finish up on anything. I don't know. Or that's how we just end it. <laughs> we can do our ending and then get out of here. And then all good. So thanks everyone for watching and listening, hanging out. Um, again, we're talking to Mark from Markets VR. All the links um, shared will be in the show notes of both the video and the audio. Um, just remember, first month's free. Uh, if you're looking to get a booth, um, act fast. You could be our neighbor. Otherwise, come check us out. We'll <laughs> let you know when everything launches, and you can come in here and do some virtual shopping. And then are we going to carry on chatting after? Because a few things I would like to talk to you guys about if you're up for it. Sure. I think have you stopped the transmission now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll wait till that's done. Four. <laughs> I'll with your eyes. <laughs> Amber's have eyes. Yeah. <laughs>